Hello everyone, this is Parnia Soleimani from George Mason University's HAP 725 Statistical Process Control course, and today I will be doing a Teach One presentation on the comparison of means. In this video, we will be solving for question number one, and it reads as, in health administration programs, conducting satisfaction surveys are usually covered in courses on quality improvement. This exercise shows how data from satisfaction surveys can be analyzed over time. Assume that, in different time periods, four randomly selected patients rated their satisfaction with our services. Are we improving? In order to solve this problem, we'll need to create a control chart. Control charts serve many purposes. They're essentially graphs that show variations in a process over time and are used to determine whether there are any special causes of variation and whether these variations could be due to chance. Control charts also examine process improvements over time. Here's a brief overview and the steps we'll be taking to approach this problem. The first step is opening the file, which is saved as data X bar, and using the tab labeled Q1 for this particular question. The second step, Calculating control limits will be broken down into five categories. The first step is calculating the average per time period. Next is calculating the average for all observations, followed by calculating the standard deviation for all observations and standard deviation per time period. Next, we will calculate the upper control limit and the lower control limit. For step three, we will plot the limits and create a chart. And in the final step, we will analyze the results by comparing placement for each time period and examining whether we did better or worse than usual. Okay, so let's go to the first step. You'll open the file titled data X bar. And the first thing that should pop up is question one tab. And that contains five columns, the first being the time period, and then four additional columns for ratings of four different patients. Each row corresponds with the time period one through four. Now the next step is calculating the control limits, but in order to do that, we have to make a few calculations prior for the average and standard deviation. The first thing you wanna do is make a column named average rating, and then you would do the equal sign for the first row under that column and use the average function, which is a built-in function in Excel and select the ratings of first patient through the ratings of fourth patient as highlighted in blue. And instead of doing this for every single row, you can simply grab the right bottom corner of the cell once you press enter and then drag it down to time period four. And that should auto populate each uh, row um, using that formula that you made for the first row. Once you have the average rating for each time period, you'll then want to calculate the average for all observations. So go ahead and make an additional row for average for all observations, and you want to put in the formula equals average and select all of the columns and rows from B2 to E5, which will contain all of the rating values for patients one through four. And once you do that, you will have one single value, which is 77.14 for the average for all observations. Now we're going to calculate the standard deviation for all observations. And we can do this the same way that we did the previous step by creating a new row for the standard deviation and using the formula equals STDEV, which is specific to standard deviation and then selecting the ratings of patient one through four, which is highlighted in blue, to obtain a value of 4.35. Next, we'll calculate the standard deviation, this time for each time period. And to do this, we need to create a new column. We can label it as standard deviation for each period and use the following formula as shown below. That is equals F dollar sign seven, and we use the dollar sign to ensure that this is a fixed cell and it will not change as we go down for each row over the square root of, and then count B2 to E2, which contains all of the values for the ratings for each patient. Once you do this, you can grab the bottom right-hand corner like we did before, 
and drag it all the way down to populate each row. We should finally be able to calculate the control limits, but before we go any further, I want to briefly explain what the upper control limit and the lower control limit reflect. So the upper control limit for a given time period is essentially the average for all observations plus t times the standard deviation for that given time period. The t value depends on the number of observations and the confidence interval used. Depending on the confidence interval, we can expect that either 95 or 99% of values fall between the upper control limit and the lower control limit. Now for the lower control limit for a given time period, it's the average for all observations, but instead of adding t times the standard deviation for that time period, we'll be subtracting it. Let's go ahead and calculate the lower control limit by using the following formula. Equals f dollar sign six, and again, this ensures that there's a fixed cell for the average for all observations, minus, since it's for the lower control limit, 1.96, and this value sets the limit so that 95% of the data falls within the two limits, times G2, which is a standard deviation for the first time period. And once you do this, you can go ahead and do it for each row. You can calculate the upper control limit almost the exact same way, but instead of subtracting 1.96 T value times the standard deviation for each period, you'll be adding it. And once you're done, your spreadsheet should look like this with the time period, ratings of the first to the fourth patient, average ratings for each time period, standard deviation for each period, lower and upper control limits, as well as the average and standard deviation for all observations. Now we're ready to move on to step three, which is finally plotting the limits. And I thought it'll be easier to just show the three columns that we're gonna be working with in order to create the control chart. And these columns are the average rating, lower control limit, and the upper control limit. So go ahead and copy and paste these into a new tab or spreadsheet. And what you want to do is select all of the values, then select insert at the top. And your options may look slightly different depending on what year of Excel you're using, but you should go ahead and find the insert line or area chart option. And go ahead and select the first thing under the 2D line, which is a simple line chart. And once you do that, you should get something that looks like this. Now, before moving forward, we'll need to make a few minor edits, which will consist of adding axis titles, removing the grid lines, and a few other things. So there are a few ways of going about this, but I think this is the most easy and straightforward way. Go ahead and click on the plus option, which will expand the chart elements and show you the different options to choose from. For my chart, I chose to show the axes, the access titles, and the legend. As you can see, I did remove a few things, such as the grid lines to make it look a little bit more clean and straightforward. As far as the axis titles go, the x-axis is the time period and the y-axis should be the satisfaction rating. And this is how my chart looked like after making the changes. You can also choose to show the legend on the right side, but for presentation purposes, I kept them at the bottom so that the graph would not be as compressed. Now we just need to make some more minor edits to clearly show data points and better differentiate between the lines. Um, these changes can be made by right-clicking on the line you would like to alter and clicking on outline. Once you do that, you should see a selection of different options to choose from. Go ahead and change the lines to whatever color you would like the limits to be displayed as. In this case, I did choose red, and I will do the same for the lower control limit. And once you do this, you should end up with something similar, showing the average rating and the lower and upper control limits with their appropriate colors. It's time to add markers to the chart now that you have your line set up. This can be done by right clicking on the line showing the average rating, which will prompt a box to appear on the right. Click on the paint bucket, click on marker right below that, and go ahead and select the marker options under that. 
You can select different types of markers at different sizes depending on how big or small you want them to be. I went ahead and clicked on the built-in function, selected uh, square markers, and set the size to 6. With our chart looking like this, we can move on to the fourth and final step of analyzing the data. Based on our control limits in red and positioning of the points in blue, we can see that the first time period falls just above the upper limit, indicating we did well during this particular period. We can also see that the second time period falls below the lower control limit, showing we did worse in this period than usual, and that the changes were not due to chance. In addition, there are some other things to consider. Fewer data means less precision and wider limits, which is what we are currently observing. The upper control limit and lower control limits for the fourth time period have wider limits compared to the first, second, and third periods. This can be attributed to the fact that there were only two observations during this time period, as opposed to the four in the other periods. This also indicates a larger standard deviation. So in conclusion, Patients rated our services higher in the first time period, but lower in the second time period, both in which the ratings were not due to chance. This clearly shows a change in satisfaction from one period to the next. With this information, we can better focus and work on improving performance across all time periods to make sure patient satisfaction is at a high. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for watching and feel free to let me know if you have any questions.